So, dear Brian, eventually we are witnessing the much anticipated re release of Fact and Fiction. Let's talk about this uh, amazing triple CD. CD1 contains the original album plus a few bonus tracks, right? Correct, yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Well, it is basically tracks that we recorded in the studio back in 1982, which is when we recorded the original album. Mm -hmm. um, we did record a couple of other tracks um, that came out as a single, which was uh, our cover of Elna Rigby and a song called East of Eden, which we eventually decided there wasn't room for on the album. Um, so they were released as a single, but they're, they're, they're reunited with the other tracks on this one. And also, when we first went into the studio, we had ideas to, um, to, to, to sequence the tracks in a slightly different order. There were different tracks, in fact, and in a different order. So we've actually put on one, the original recording of Human Being, which um, I titled Being Human because it's quite different and quite a lot faster. And then there's a little link between that and um, East of Eden, as, as, as we originally designed the album to be. So all of the tracks on the first disc are studio recordings from Revolution Studios in 1982. And what can you tell us about the live songs contained on CD number two? Well, what I wanted to do with this, because my, my idea was to focus on the on the, the, the tracks of fact and fiction. So, so in doing the definitive version, the idea was to focus on those tracks and not focus so much on what the band was doing at the time. In other words, what other t songs the band might have been playing live in, uh, you know, at the same time, as we've done with the other definitive editions, which have worked very well. But I really wanted to focus on the core eight tracks from the original album. So what we did with this too was find live versions of all the tracks, and they're all in the, in the same order as on the original album, um, with a couple of extras at the end. And I wanted to show how different lineups of the band, and in particular the various different singers we've had, have interpreted um, the songs that Jeff originally wrote. So besides um, Jeff's uh, singing on uh, two or three of the tracks, there's a couple of tracks which, which feature Andy Sears, and a couple that feature our current singer, Mark Spencer. And of course, those range from... Uh, the very first shows we did in 1980, well, I, think, I think the oldest one is 1983, um, that would have been with Jeff through um, right up until 2000 and, uh, 2012 um, with, with Mark. So we've managed to cover pretty much you know, all the major lineups of the band and variations, including um, there was one track from 2010 when uh, Roy Key was deputised for, for for Andy Revel and Dean Baker first joined so yeah and then uh, there's a, a second version of Fact and Fiction because the current version we play of that track is very different the original version it, on the original album and as we used to perform it live with the four of us um, sorry the five of us was done with a, a vocalist a drummer and three people playing keyboards um, no guitars anything like that um, it was us pretending to be Depeche Mode and, <laughs> the popular English band of the time but the version we do now is completely different and it's basically all about guitars so it's a different arrangement um, so both of those two different um, versions are on disc two and it's rounded off with some of the original demos that um, we recorded back in 1982 that were either developed into different songs and eventually came onto the Fact and Fiction album or weren't developed so they're, they're basically just, you know, demos of interest. And I, I'm sure... And, there's, and also, there's one of our most famous tracks, Creep Show, has a, a quite a significant speech, uh, sort of two-thirds of the way through, and we've put on there one of, the, one of the original alternative versions that Jeff had for the speech, which is called After the Bomb Drops, which links into his uh, general lyrics about fact and, fi uh, fact and fiction and... Um, the onset, the possible onset of nuclear war, which actually looked like a possibility in 1982. Yeah, and finally we can listen to some amazing uh, interpretation of your music by artists such as uh, Pendragon, Galahad, uh, Clive Nolan and many others. So once I had that basic idea of the original album and the interpretation uh, and, and, and showing how we performed it live, I thought, well, 
actually focusing on the songs even further by showing how different artists had mm. had covered the songs because a few of those um, interpretations or covers like for example Pendragon One the ones that Jeff did with his own band a Jeff Mann band and also um Love Song, for example, had already been done by other people. Alan Reed has performed Love Song over a number of years. He, he did a version on um, uh, the Mannerisms album with Clive Nolan. Um, this time we've used the one with him and Kim Sevier, which is very nice, very different. And I suddenly thought, well, actually, there's a lot, a lot of other uh, material available. And also, Mark Spencer, who sings with us now, but also plays every instrument, um, has been working on his own version of the Facts and Fiction album for, for a number of years. And he played me some tracks several years ago, and I thought, well, these, these are great. These are really good. And I was thinking, well, originally, perhaps, to have the third disc would be his version of the Facts and Fiction album. But over time, as things developed, I realized that what he was doing was just so good that yeah. it deserved to have a proper individual standalone release of its own. Um, but I said to him, OK, well, look, but you must let us have a couple of tracks. So we, he's given us um, We Are Sane and um, a version of The Poet, which um, he asked Lee Abraham, who now plays with Galahad as well as a solo career, to, to play on as well. And when I sort of put it together, I realised that there was only a couple of tracks that I didn't have... Um, versions of um, Stu Nicholson from Galahad uh, was very very happy to do a version of Facts and Fiction because they used to sing Twelfth Night songs in their early days I, I don't know whether you know but when he formed um, Galahad with Roy Keyworth um, Roy's original band I think was called Sequences which was named after the Twelfth Night song <laughs> yeah, Roy was a big nice. tw Twelfth Night fan which is <laughs> Seems remarkable now, but um, that, that's how it was. So they were very familiar with Twelfth Night songs. Um, Tim Bonus, who is a fabulous artist, had emailed me out, the, out of the blue a few years ago because he has a distribution company called Burning Shed, which sells CDs besides you know, doing his own music. And he just sort of said to me, almost as a throwaway comment, oh, by the way, if you're ever doing a version of this city, um, I'd love to sing on it. And so I thought, I'll take you up on that. So I got in touch with him and he was only too pleased to do it. So he did that. And then the other version, which has really knocked us, knocked us out, is by a band called Coburg, which uh, is led by uh, a girl called Anastasia Coburg, who um, has a beautiful voice. And she's also a very talented uh, guitarist and I think keyboard player. And um, with Dean, they worked on a version of This City and the beautiful thing about that is is that she did it without ever having heard the original. Oh. So her phrasing of the lyrics and, and the melodies and stuff are different. Uh, and that is really refreshing. So to hear someone basically sort of looking at the words, I mean, yes, obviously the chord structure was, was the same because Dean put that together, but her vocal melodies and stuff were were her were hers. Whereas the other a lot of you know, most of the other interpretations are are, are are more closer to the to the original. So um and then I think the only the only gap I really had was World Without End. So I um spoke to Clive Nolan who's a very close friend, um, who I see on a very regular basis because he worked where well, he lives in the same studios as Carl Groom, who does all our mastering. Um, we were over there last week. I had a chat with Clive. He just got back from Detroit, which is <laughs> quite fun because he was a bit jet lagged. And I asked him if he if he could do a little version of World Without End. And of course, he not only did it. I mean, he took it off in a wonderful channeling Sibelius. I think he described it as direction. Uh, and and the best thing about it is, is all those people put together great versions, and they all did it out of friendship for us and out of respect and you know i mean I, I couldn't be more grateful and that for me is i mean having lived with the original album and the live versions over many years you know to hear the disc three which is all the new interpretations together uh, you know is really exciting and i think you know, a lot of the people that have heard the album uh, have really been taken by that because it just adds you know yet another dimension to the to the original album
What do you miss the most about um, a man and an artist like Jeff Mann? Well, it's a long time now since um, we were with Jeff. It's 25 years since he passed away, and obviously he left the band in 1983, um, although we remained you know, friends for what, another, the next 10 years or so. Um, I mean, from, from my point of view, what do I miss? I mean, him as a person was um, a very funny person, very entertaining. Um, from an artistic point of view, just simply the range of activity, uh, the range of artistic ability. Um, I mean, he taught himself to play guitar um, in a sort of, you know, just by being inspired by what Andy was playing. And um, I mean, he was always an established painter. He was also a playwright. Um, and I think, you know, his, his lyrics are without hear in rock music i mean I, i i you know i've never seen anyone write lyrics as good as that i mean to, to my mind they are just pure poetry um so w working with him is a challenge um i mean jeff and i were perhaps at the opposite ends of the musician um spectrum in the sense that jeff was very much an artist whereas i've always had an eye an eye on the Uh, on, on, on turning the art into something that you could promote and perhaps be commercial you know it was more art for art's sake with Jeff which was absolutely fine but the band needed me to be able to turn that into a reality I mean one of the reasons why I think that we're uh, you know we're, we're, we're st I'm still we're still able to release things like fact and fiction is because you know we've looked after things quite well I mean I, I said in an interview recently Um, for the Barbican show that, you know, the, the original music was created with love and it's been subsequently curated with care. And, um, you know, and, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very, very pleased with that. Yeah, and which are your best memories about the post-Jeff era? Oh, let me think. I, I think the, the early days with, with Andy Sears when he first joined the band were very exciting because... Um, You know, that was a positive move for us, although, you know, we were disappointed when Jeff uh, decided to leave from a from a musical career development position. It, 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 it actually gave us, I think I said at the time, these were to go sideways to go up again, you know, so that was quite exciting. And certainly the, you know, the early days with Andy and some of the shows we did, um, you know, we had good memories of when we went to, to Germany. Um, I think in terms of the, you know, since we got back together in 2007, 2008, I mean, virtually every gig has been, that we've done has been a great event. Um, I remember going to Tiana in Spain, Lorelei in Germany, again, was fantastic. Um, Andy and I took a, took a version of the band over to America to play uh, near Fest. That was great fun. Um, the Barbican show, which we're about to release on... Um, DVD and CD, you know, that, that sort of wrapped it up and that was a big highlight, yeah. I was talking about this issue with uh, Mike Holmes from IQ. I want to ask you the same question. Do you think it's correct to talk uh, about a new progressive rock scene in Britain back in the 80s? Well, yes, I think, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any problem with that. Um, the fact was that uh, the, I mean, I was active musically in the early 70s um i played in a punk band for a while because a friend of mine was managing them and they needed the drummer and i, I filled in for a while so you know i was reasonably aware of what was happening in that kind of scene which was basically the the pub you know the pub pubs and clubs in 1976 and then you know bands like ourselves formed in marillion obviously and pallet in scotland and we all we were broadly playing similar music in that we were all inspired i think by the people from the previous generation um bands you know like genesis yes pink floyd um were all significant influences on all of us i mean i think it was more noticeable in certain what certain people did than than, than others certainly the the fact that you know the front men you know used costumes 
as well <laughs> had very little to do with the punk thing and a lot to do with what had gone on previously um and yeah i don't think I, I don't have any problems at all about being associated with those other bands or a scene at that particular time i mean it ended up centering around the marquee club in london um so yeah no i no issues with that at all yeah and could you like share one uh, final message and greeting to the italian fans of 12th night i am truly sorry that we've never as so, so far been able to come and play in Italy. I, I know how passionate the Italian fans are and I know how important Italy was in the uh, early careers of bands like Genesis and Van de Graaff Generator, two of the bands that were most, uh, you know, that inspired Twelfth Night most, certainly uh, Rev and Andy Revel, and myself and Jeff uh, were, were fans of those, those particular bands. Um, but All I would say is, is that, you know, um, I hope that our music has given you pleasure over the years and we are very, very grateful for the support you've given us up till now and, and hopefully we'll continue to do so.